Talk to us about crew life playing in League Two. Yeah, it was, um, to be honest, at the start of the, the season, um, before the, obviously the season started, I, I didn't really know where I was going to end up, but um, sort of from a club's perspective, they, the club really, like in Brentford, really wanted me to try, uh, try English football. Um, and with Crew being a club that uh, typically is known to play uh, a good style of football, I thought it, was, it would be a good fit. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it was definitely, definitely a learning curve for me, um, playing in, in League Two, as I'm sure everyone knows is quite physical. And even, um, even with the 46 games a season, on top of like three different separate like, uh, cup competitions, it's, it's very full on. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot, a lot from that. Um, and obviously living up north is, is a completely different thing to living in London as well. Uh, so yeah, I, overall, I think I enjoyed my time for sure, yeah, and learned a lot. Nice. Uh, is it is League Two as brutal as you thought it would be? More brutal, less brutal? I think it's sort of what I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's just extremely physical. And even like you said, with the 46 games, even if you're playing not so physical football, it, it does take a big toll on you. Um, yeah, so, and especially when it's getting cold as well. I mean, some of the pitches are frozen over, so there's some, some weeks you miss games. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's very mentally stressful as well, um, as well as physical. Do you feel like you got what you were hoping to get out of your return to England? Yeah, I think so. Um, if you look at the season from an outsider's point of view, uh, it might look like a negative step, but um, I just think every, every year and every time you play football, you're, you're learning. There's never a wrong move. Uh, maybe on paper it didn't look like the greatest move, but the things that I learned in that time um, and the things that I'm going to learn from that and p pushing forward are going to help me is, is massive. So, yeah, I think it was um, something that definitely will help me out in the long run. Cool. Um, and how, how important was that time back in Adelaide? Um, you know, obviously uh, a very different pace, different style, different everything, different lifestyle. Um, how beneficial do you think it was just going back to Adelaide? Honestly, the, I think the Adelaide move was the, the best thing that I've ever done for my football. Um, I was sort of getting to a point uh, overseas where I sort of felt like I was just playing football for the sake of it. Um, and going back to Adelaide definitely made me fall in love with the game again. So that time uh, is probably, probably the happiest I've been playing football ever. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm from Adelaide and all the boys that I know, if it was up to me, I'd play there for the rest of my life for sure. It's, Honestly, I never had a, a bad moment there. Um, so I think in terms of my overall mental health and stuff as well, is it was huge. Like, yeah, it literally put me in the right put put me in the right step to just continue to play football and really, really enjoy it for sure. So yeah, I think it was massive. And, and you must be stoked watching how well the boys have done. You know, only one good result away from a grand final. It must. Be yeah, awesome. I was gutted when they um when they missed out again this year. I said like I watched every game. Of Adelaide, they're on usually around like 8:30, 10:30 in the morning. So even if I'm sitting in the change rooms, I've always got my phone on me watching the games and stuff. And I usually get bantered off. They're saying, "Oh, you, they, you're not there anymore." This and that. I said, "Nah." It's, even if I never played there, it's my like it's the club I grew up watching and stuff. So yeah, no, nah, I was I was I was disappointed that they they didn't get through, but also really happy with how they went throughout the season as well. And you touched on it a bit there, but talk to us about like the role of the A-League in your upbringing and sort of your pathway to where you are today? I, I'm like A-League's biggest advocate, honestly. Like anyone that I speak to back uh, in England or anywhere, I think that they've got a bit of an arrogance about the league in terms that they don't think it's, it's very high level and stuff. And it's a little bit of a shame because, the, I mean, you look at even the World Cup and how that went. Most of the players that stood out were players that either came from the A-League or are playing there still. And, um, I think the World Cup did a really good job of putting, you know, not putting, them on, putting us on the map, but sort of just awakening everyone's like idea of the A League because, like, I've played in it and you know I've watched it and it's criminally underrated, man. Like, honestly, it's it's criminally underrated and it's just the way that it's um, portray, uh, portrayed, like, in other leagues is just crazy. Because I know for sure, I think if those A League teams were in other leagues, especially within England, I think they'd be like high high league one, even bottom champ, um, maybe with a bigger squad with the, obviously the amount of games that they play. But yeah, for sure, it's um, the, the role that it's played for me is massive. And I think the best thing about the A-League is how you can get those young players through. 
Um, and I think that's really been the focus the last, I know, four or five years. You see how many young players are, you know, playing and then moving overseas. It's the perfect pathway, perfect pathway. So, yeah, massive, massive role. Well, that's awesome. And so now you grew up watching the A-League, supporting the Socceroos. You're in the uh, camp with the boys, beautiful location. How does this feel? Must be living the dream. It's my favourite part of any footballing calendar, really, is representing the country and obviously seeing all these boys, especially when I've been away. I uh, don't really get to see too many of the boys. So um, I've got some of my lifetime best mates here. Um, so it's always, it's always the best. And like you said, when we've got facilities like this, um, we've not really had a, a, a base for European players um, for the last, I don't know, a, a long time. So having somewhere we can come and usually we're the ones that always have to go back. Um, it does really help having this where, you know, so those boys that have to do the traveling for once. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I really enjoy coming here. You touched on it again, having this facility as the base, how do you feel like this European training center has helped you guys sort of build towards your goals? I think it's just, ha like you said, in the end of the day, Europe has some of the best competition and you know the best teams that, these are the teams that you want to be playing in any sort of pre preparation for tournaments or even if it's just in those windows, you want to be playing against the best teams and the more times that we can get together as a team, play games against good competition is only going to help us. So um, obviously the closer we are in Europe, the more games we can have. So I think this base has really just opened up a whole nother, whole nother can of worms just in terms of playing against that good opposition um, and it's only going to help us along the way for sure. And it is a, it's a prestigious tournament. Um, how special is it knowing that you know, you're playing in one of those tournaments that is known for uncovering really good young talent? Yeah, it's an honour. I mean, everyone that you speak to when they, they were asking me, oh, what do you got in the off season? I tell them I'm coming to this tournament. Everyone's like, oh, wow, that's a massive tournament. So, you know, it's not, um, it is going to be really good for us, I think. And even for some of the boys, you know, for contracts and stuff, it's just in every way, it's going to be, it's going to be massive for us and a real honour. And so, Back to life in England. Um, obviously, it must be great to watch how well Brentford continue to do. You know, they, they've gone from strength to strength in the Premier League. What sort of contact do you have with Thomas Frank and sort of what are your hopes and aspirations at this point? Um, yeah, throughout the year, just it's, it's not massive, obviously, because I'm more with the B team and stuff. Um, but when I went back last week, obviously had a few chats and he knew about the loan and whatnot. So, um, yeah, it's just... But obviously, yeah, my time probably come to an end there. Um, so I'll be looking at trying to find somewhere where I can really start kicking on and on a permanent. Because um, loans can be difficult, obviously, especially I'm getting to that age where I really need to start playing games consistently. And um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the next chapter of my footballing journey for sure. Awesome. Um, and then just got a few really quick answer ones. Um, so during the World Cup, what were you doing? Uh, sitting on my couch in crew watching all of the games. I had a um, a wall behind my TV with every single one of the flags and uh, my missus would like take down the flag as the teams got knocked out so it's quite interesting yeah unreal uh, the soccer is legend you idolized was good answer uh, your favorite soccer is memory I'd have to say the recent memory obviously it's quite relevant you know I've got a few mates that were playing in the in the team and you know people that I played with and I think there was no better joy seeing them do what they did um, and like I said Put, not putting us on the map, but really putting a foot forward in and how other nations, you know, take us. So I think that's massive um, and what they've done is unbelievable. The most surreal pinch me moment you've had this season? Um, goals. Yeah, for me, it was probably just scoring some goals and just playing games, really. Um, I've had a the seasons where I'm not really getting the stats up so just having a few goals and sort of um, having that and belief in myself is probably the probably the one for me yeah and what's the most Australian thing you look forward to about camp with everyone just seeing the boys a hundred percent I think everyone's answers will be the same like just seeing the boys and having that nothing will beat Aussie camaraderie that's I can guarantee that um, so yeah that that for sure and then just one, um, the AIS were just wanting to get you just saying um, just basically what you're here doing. So just say, oh, we're here preparing for this tournament with blah, blah, blah. That's all right. It's Maurice Ravello, I'm saying that yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're here preparing for the Maurice Ravello tournament um, as a team. Um, and we're looking forward to the tournament and having these facilities to help us hopefully go as far as we can.